I came of age in Detroit in the turbulent 60s, amid racial uprisings, cultural shifts, Vietnam, and labor management battles. I'd known early on that I wanted to help people, so following my father's footsteps, I became a doctor. I figured it would give me the chance to do good without doing any harm. I practiced clinical medicine for nearly 20 years, and then moved into care management, and then on to product and network development. One of the highest points in my career came a couple of years ago, when I heard I was on the shortlist for serious consideration to be the next United States Surgeon General. For the four decades prior to receiving this recognition, I explored pretty much every corner of the belly of the beast. The beast that is the American healthcare delivery system. Our system is the costliest in the world, but many of our outcomes aren't any better than you find in third world countries. We spend nearly a fifth of our gross national product on health care. It makes up 35% of the $4 trillion federal budget, and that percentage is going nowhere but up. When I began my journey, I wasn't exactly clear on what my destination was going to be, but I've now identified it. What I'm after is nothing less than better health, better care, at a fair cost for everyone. In January 2014, I had a personal health scare that gave me first-hand experience as a patient and not solely as a physician. And as I'm about to explain, it's the one that changed my life and launched me on my current path. Professionally, I was traveling all over the country when my left index finger turned black and blue and swelled up to roughly the size of a sausage. It was hardly the first time something went wrong with my body, but this was the strangest condition I've dealt with. On the road, I was accompanied by this swollen and throbbing finger, consuming large amounts of anti-inflammatory medication with no improvement whatsoever. So I went to a rheumatologist, a specialist in inflammatory conditions. The usual battery of tests and x-rays to rule out conditions were ordered. From these tests, there was no clear diagnosis, but the physician had to do something, so antibiotics and steroids were prescribed. Around this time, I started hearing the word dactylitis, informally known as sausage digit. I finished my travels and returned home to the Bay Area, where I went to another rheumatologist who confirmed it was, in fact, sausage digit. He injected it with prednisone and had me taking four pills a day. Over the next several months, this finger slowly, slowly got better. Then, just when I thought I was out of the woods, I was plunged into a new kind of trouble. Week after week, I was deluged with bills and explanation of benefits, each jammed with unrecognizable numbers and codes. I nearly wore out my nine good fingers, writing letters, emails, and making calls questioning the charges. I also started receiving calls from accounting departments and eventually bill collectors. At some point, I figured out that my insurance payments were being forwarded to the right provider, but to the wrong department. The provider side wasn't communicating effectively with the insurance side, and there was no solution forthcoming to my problem. It was after this maddening healthcare experience I decided to swing for the fences to tackle America's healthcare crisis. I realized what probably every American feels, a fundamental overhaul of the healthcare delivery system is desperately needed. But it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. We must constructively transform the way we think and act in three major categories. One, transparency, not opacity. Healthcare delivery currently takes place in ill-defined silos whose occupants could communicate better with one another. Primary care physicians, nurses, and physicians' assistants should interact more amongst themselves. Specialists, at times, are too confined to their specific areas of practice. Payers don't communicate well with providers and patients. Moving forward, all clinical providers and payers should be as empathetic and patient-centric as possible. Two, value-based, not volume. Switching from a fee-for-service to a value-based payment model isn't just a good idea, it's the law. The Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, requires it. It will mean bringing the current confusing, dysfunctional financial system more into line with that of other industries, like e-commerce, where it's been proven to work quite well. And three, prevention as well as cure. Everybody knows that primary care early is cheaper and more effective than specialty care later. A recent USA Today cover story tells of how high deductible insurance policies are forcing people to put off simple, cheap treatments until they turn into complicated, expensive ones. Passing up on a $20 prescription can easily turn into a $10,000 procedure, and if an emergency room is involved, triple that. The shift from treating illnesses to keeping people healthy will, of course, require tremendous positive yeah, changes. Yeah. So 
I often talk about the four P's, personal health, population health, public health, and place, and how they must all be dealt with jointly in order to improve any of them individually. However, this won't happen without a fifth P, political will. First, we need to start with ourselves. Research your condition. Join a gym and have a proper diet. Ask questions. Actually follow your doctor's orders, not just some of them. Then, once you've acted personally, act collectively. Research your health plan. Write a letter. Complain. It worked for me. Talk to anyone who will listen. Your providers, your insurer, your hospital, your union, the media, and especially your elected and appointed officials. I am committed and involved to constructive health transformation. You should be too. And together we'll succeed in living longer, healthier, and happier lives.